you have cleared yes. No, I have. Hey, technology works. Right. Why are you sideways? Am I sideways wait, or are you wait, sideways? Wait, wait. It's okay, ladies. I got it. All right. Hey, How are you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Sorry to I'm... keep you waiting. Ah, all good. All good. <laughs> it's, it's the technology, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I know you, you kids today, you're all fired up with the technology. But, uh... Well, honestly, David, I've never done this myself, myself alive. Oh, really? Alive. No yeah. way. No way. No. Nope. So Puma have brought us together. We're, we're actually only a few hundred meters apart. We, we both live in Fonvi in Monaco, so we're not that far apart, but we're yeah. connected by the power of technology and uh, via the Puma site. I could have actually walked over to you and then just keep my one and a half meters distance. We only needed to like turn the camera. <laughs> <laughs> that people would have freaked out at that, but I would have been cool with it. So, so you're, you're in your apartment. I see you've got, uh, it's always good to look in the, the, uh, the background. So you, what are those images we've got on your wall? There? Oh, I don't know. It's quite a, like a few cars, myself. Okay. Yeah. Are you shooting a gun? <laughs> Is that you with a gun in the top right? No, 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 that's not me. That's not <laughs> no, 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 we don't do that. No, no, good stuff. And the, the sports car behind you, you know, yeah, I don't know a what, white helmet. I don't know what that is, mate. Yeah, yeah, but you see my trophy cabinet behind. The only that, thing I could find with orange was my, my gray pumas, but they had a little bit of orange, so I put them in there beside Michael's helmet to, to show that I'm really getting into this sort of you know. The Dutch mm -hmm. psyche, the power of that color is it, 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 it motivates you, doesn't it? It's like red to mm -hmm. a bull. It is, you know, I mean, I always, when I was little, my favorite color was blue. But of course, when, um, you know, especially with fans and you want to stand out and, and of course, the national color of Holland, orange, I think it's, it's just a really cool color. And it really, um, you know, it really connects to Holland. Um, that's why sometimes also to be able to have an orange helmet. Um, it's just very cool. I mean, I don't want to have it the whole year because I think, you know, it can be a bit too much to drive for the whole year. But, you know, on, on a one-off and stuff like that, I think it's really cool. So, uh, sorry, I'm just setting up another camera there just to capture these, uh, this momentous occasion. Um, in terms of how you've been spending your lockdown, we've seen various, uh, various drivers uh, participating in various racing platforms. We know you've been a big, big fan of gaming. Um, I know you take your training very seriously. I saw on your, you've done some posting uh, of some of the training you've done, but largely speaking, you, you've kept a reasonably low profile during this time. So for a young guy having to be in one place for so long, have you found it challenging or is the focus just, look, this, this is just extra time to plan my attack? Um, I mean, I anyway like to be at home and I would always, let's say, if I come back from races, I would like really spend a lot of time just in my apartment, not just be outside. Uh, I mean, I can be on the balcony, but I really love just being at home. It's nice and quiet. Uh, but of course, after the, you know, the last few weeks, um, just being inside, is, it, can, it can be a bit boring. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of sim racing. I think I've watched half of Netflix as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like probably a lot of other people. Um, but yeah, I, I think um, it's, of course, now, now it's all opening up a little bit in Monaco, so that's nice. You can go outside and, of course, go for, for runs and stuff like that. But, um, of course, up until, uh, let's say, last week, I had to do uh, all of it at home. Um, it was nice for a while, but, of course, after a few weeks, yeah. You, you like to, it's always like, uh, always what you can't have, you, you like to do it, right? Because you, when they tell you to stay inside, you want to give, you want to go outside, and of course that that is always the hard bit. Yeah, well, I, it's been really good for for me. Thanks for asking. Uh, in that I've lost a couple of kilos. I've, you know, all this I sort was, of discipline. <laughs> I was not sure if I was allowed to ask questions, but now I now I know. So, hey man, you're the boss. So you know, I'm I'm just hosting this. But uh, actually, if, if you don't even have to answer any of my questions, you can. I can ask you a question. You can answer whatever you want. Okay. Okay. That's good. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, some probably some bits we cannot answer or yeah. even ask the question. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. We've got to be respectful on this site. But uh, anyway, so in, in terms of, right, training, I know that, I, as I say, I've lost a couple of kilos. I've, I've been able to get back into a normal training program because 
as you'll hopefully not find out for a long time, when you retire, normal life takes over. And then that doesn't really leave time for the discipline and self-focus that you have as a racer. So where do you sit right now and and where your training program has been going? Because you you haven't been able to do the normal cardio, but presumably you've been more disciplined on on strength work. So you're a tall guy, you carry some muscle. Are you sort of weighing yourself daily to make sure that you're, you know, your engineer isn't going to freak out when you turn up looking all six pack and carrying a <laughs> kilo heavier? No, I, I always weigh myself every day. I, uh, I find that for me, I mean, I, I easily gain weight if I would say, you know, start eating wrong and drinking the, the wrong drinks and stuff. So I really need to be on, on top of that. Um, and of course, when I, when I came back from Australia, I might have had a, a week because it was all very uncertain what was going to happen. So I had probably a week where I was just eating a bit more than what I w- would normally do. Um, but overall, I think it's more important to just stay ready for whenever, of course, uh, we can go racing again. So I, of course, ha- I have a watt bike at home. I have this like skier thing, which is a kind of a rowing effect. So, you know, these kind of things, okay, okay I'm maybe not running as much as I would do, but uh, overall, I think it's still a good cardio uh, hit. And and running, you build up quite easy. I mean, I, I, I will not run the marathon in two and a half, three hours, but I am, I'm also not planning to do that anyway in my life. Um, but overall, it's pretty, it, it, it has been pretty good to just keep it up. I have my weights, I have my bands, I have my, let's say, neck harness to, to keep training my neck. And um, yeah, I think overall, that's most of what I need anyway. Yeah, I think the neck is the, the thing. You know, these cars today, wide tires, loaded down for, especially in qualifying, you're pulling some big G. Maybe there's a little bit less pressure on you than in comparison to the cars of a few years ago because of the, you know, carrying the fuel at the beginning of the race. The, the actual amount of energy at the beginning of the Grand Prix is a bit lower. But yeah. it, the neck is the big concern, isn't it? And our, our first, yeah. first race looks like it's going to be Austria. Where does that sit? A couple of high-speed left-hand corners. Do you expect to feel it? Um, uh, well, I hope not. I hope I don't feel it. That means that I'm uh, that I'm at a good level. Uh, but yeah, we will make sure I, I I'll be uh, definitely ready to go. I'm I'm not too worried about that. I've never really struggled with my neck. Like luckily, it also I mean some people just struggle more with the neck. It doesn't matter how hard they train. It just depends on on the length uh, of your neck. So. Um, I've been very fortunate with that, but that doesn't mean, of course, you don't stop training. Um, yeah. I always had the goal that, of course, when I'm driving a car to the limit, I shouldn't be limited, of course, with the physicality of it. Um, but yeah, normally Austria, anyway, it's not the hardest track, but it's mainly um, you want to have uh, capacity to dr- to do more than only driving the car, right? So um, you need to be fit also just in your head, you know, mentally, you need to be uh, ready to go again. Um, and besides that, it's not only, I think, just doing uh, workouts, but I've been driving a lot on my simulator as well. And that might sound like it's quite different to the real world. But at the end of the day, you're still doing qualifying with pressure. You're still doing starts. You're still doing, you know, overtakes. You're, you're looking after yourself in the first lap not to crash and, and stuff like that. So uh, doing pit stops, you know, doing pit box entries, um, all these kind of things uh, you need to do. In, in the real world uh, as well. So I think this is the best way of, of, uh, of course, staying uh, sharp in that way. Yeah. Well, again, uh, as well, I think you're absolutely right. Mentally, you're keeping yourself in that sort of procedural uh, mindset of what do you do when you come in for a pit? And uh, as we both know, a lot of what you're doing in terms of pressing buttons for pit limiters and what have you, it's, it's kind of subconscious. Uh, that's where you have to be yeah. when, you, when you're driving. I've actually just taken delivery of, of a simulator. and I saw that. I've, yeah, got I saw no, that. I've got no idea. So I might need you to come over and put all the assists on um, because Stability my, assist. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my my eleven year old son Dayton. He he's been he's been on his play seat uh, for a, a year or so now, a couple of years, and he's really good. But uh, I need to get up to speed pretty quickly. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's quite funny. Um, of course, I mean, I got my dad onto it as well on a on a rig. Um, but I think initially you lack a bit of the feeling, like under braking and stuff, or, or when the car starts to slide, because most of the time, for example, if he would spin, right, I could see it already one second before that he had to correct. But I think it's just because you don't have the G-force feeling, yeah. and you have to rely a lot on, on the, the sound of uh, the tires sliding or stuff like that. Okay. Um, I, that's what I use a lot on, uh, on gaming, for example, like drive with a headset and you can really hear like when tires are sliding and, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's well, a bit easier to correct. 
Yeah, so I just put the, I literally just tried it out an hour uh, hour ago, and I put the headset on, and it, it it did feel strange not to have the ambient noise of a racing car around you, but to have the headset. So I guess yeah. I just need to get myself into that space. Yeah, so, because uh, if you have the surround sound, it uh, for me, what I think, it just when you put your headset on, it just arrives faster to your ears, you know, so you can respond a bit faster. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, I, I guess, you know, we've got loads of people here uh, online who, who've been uh, very kind to, to log in, wanting to, to hear from you. So maybe I can just hit you with a few quick questions so you can uh, bring people up to speed where you are uh, yeah. in your mind. So we've missed several of the Grand Prix. Um, I know you, you love to race. You talk about keeping your head in the right space. I think that you've already shown you're one of the mentally strongest drivers out there on track. So I don't have any fear for you when we eventually go back on, on track. But of the races that we haven't been able to compete so far, any particular one that stands out as, as one that you think, I well, wish I could have done that one? Well, of course, what is the big one that is missing, I was going to miss out, is, is Monaco. Um, yeah, it's, it's always special. Um, I, I personally, of course, I, my favorite track is Spa. So, of course, let's wait and see what's going to happen there. But um, for me, yeah, definitely Monaco. Um, yeah, I always uh, love to... To, to go to Australia. Um, of course, we were there, but we didn't race, unfortunately. Um, and then for me, I don't know, Bahrain, China, they all um, were very interesting. And then, of course, Holland was going to happen in the beginning of the season as well. And uh, at the moment, we also don't know when that's going to happen. I was, of course, very much looking forward to that one, to be able to drive in your, your own country is, is always very, very special. But uh, I think we just have to to wait and see um, what's going to happen there. Yeah, well, we've seen it a, a few of the Grand Prix. You mentioned Spa being one of your favorite tracks. And uh, again, having had the pleasure to drive that, it's a real roller coaster ride. And as you go along the Camel Strait, you know, there's always been the Max Verstappen Grandstand, you know, a sea of orange. Um, likewise, at the Red Bull Ring, I imagine Zambor would have been like that as well. Uh, I half expected to see you with uh, with your cap on, <laughs> your Puma orange yeah, hat. Yeah. Um, it's unusual to see. You. You've, have you managed to get a haircut, actually? Your hair's looking I, quite good. I did, yeah. I did two or three days ago now. Yeah. I did it on, is it Friday? Yeah, yeah probably okay. Friday. Yeah, so, but your hair looks fine. David, you don't need a haircut. Yeah, well, the, my wife did the You're color, smart. so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm getting myself back up to, you know, trying to take six months of, of age off. But anyway, there was a question behind mentioning those tracks. So the fact that we're missing out on Zambort is, you know, for the Dutch fans, for Formula One fans, for you, for the family, that's obviously a bit of a hit. But uh, you just need to be, uh, you know, patient for a year, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the, it, it, it will happen, but uh, we have to... Uh... Just wait. I mean, it's unfortunate, but we can't we can't change the the situation we are in, and uh, we just have to accept it and and try to make the best of it and and try to to move forward as fast as we can, but also, of course, as safe as we can. Yeah. So, just jumping around a little bit, Max, you you come from a racing family very much, and I know you've touched on this many times already. You're only a young man, but I'm sure you're already getting weary with, uh, you know, references to the fact your mother raced in, in karting, your, your dad was someone I raced against. Uh, did I ever tell you the story about when, you, when your father first drove a Formula One car? Uh, Estoril. Yeah, did I tell you yeah, that one? Well, I, I heard from his side, of course, what all went down, but I'm not sure what you, what you have seen. Or... <laughs> yeah, well, I probably saw more than I wanted to because uh, he'd been out testing, uh, and I was testing for, uh, with, with Williams at that time, and he'd, he'd come with a big reputation of speed, you know, a little bit like yourself when you came to Formula One and he was quick mm -hmm. and he'd really, you know, let up the timing screens. And there was no doubt that, that you know, his first test day was enough to get him uh, a, a drive in Formula One. Cue the next morning, I'm, I'm in the, the bathrooms just getting ready to get in the car uh, for the next test day and your father comes in. So we're standing beside each other. And I said to him, you know, God, you really were quick yesterday. I guess you've done everything you need to do to secure a drive in Formula One. And he kind of looked at me and said, wait till you see what I'm going to do this morning. And <laughs> it was slightly bizarre because, you know, he's, we're standing in the, the urinals. You know, so when, you know, you can imagine the, the scenario. So I was like, OK, well, look, good luck with that. Anyway, he gets in the car, I get in the car, he goes out and uh, I, w I hadn't gone out already and I heard him firing up to do a lap and he, he gets to the end of the lap and in Estero you could really hear where the cars were and all you heard was, 
smack <laughs> as he hit the barrier. And uh, so he, he really had a big shunt, but it didn't stop him getting to Formula One. But he was so determined to go even faster than the day before when he didn't need to. Yeah. So I don't know if he ever confessed to that one, but... Uh... Um, yeah, I knew I knew that he, he crashed, but uh, of course it's funny to, to hear the story from you, like how he got to that point. Um, but that that's my dad, like also in go-karting, it, it could always be done better, you know, even if I would be winning a race. Um, I, re I remember very clearly, actually, in 2013, um, uh, it was a world championship. And, uh, of course, you know, there's a lot of pressure on that. You want to win it. And I won one of my, my heat races. And, of course, everybody, um, you know, they, they said, oh, well done, great job, blah, blah, blah. But my dad, if he was my mechanic as well at the time, not in the park for me, but in general, he was right, like doing my engines and everything. So I came back to the um, to the the tent and stuff like that. And the first thing he said, like, you you fucked up there and there. You you can't do that. Like you kept making a mistake in that corner. And uh, that that's just my, who my dad is. You know, he's so driven to always try to get the best. I think back in the day, of course, about himself, but now. Um, just to get the best out of me. And he always wanted me, you know, to to do better. Uh, of course, he said when I was doing well that I did a good job or whatever, but there, there are always things to improve. And that is still now, like even if you win a race, there are always things where you can look at to try and improve. I think that's also the only way how to, to go forward. Um, because a lot of people always, you know, especially in Formula One around you, it's a big world, but they always tell you how, how good everything is and stuff like that. But you always have to look also at the critical sides and, and the small details where you can still improve and become better. So from a very young age, I think, uh, of course, from my dad's own experience, he was always trying to hammer that in with me as well. And I think that definitely um, helped me in a way. Of course, you know, I'm a different person to my dad. So I took a lot on board, but then, of course, I, I implemented it in my own way. But it was a yeah, big help for me. Yeah. And what about mom? You know, she was a racer. She's played her part as well. Yeah, my, my mom, um, yeah, she was always, of course, super supportive. Um, and she was, of course, not involved in how to set up the go-kart and stuff. But, of course, to have a mom, like, around you who is so, um, let's say, mo motivated about what you're doing. You know, of course, she was sometimes scared in the race start and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, we. It, the funny and nice thing was that I could talk to my mom about the racing as well. And it wouldn't sound like you were talking to someone who had absolutely no clue about what you were doing. So, uh, I mean, I wouldn't go into details in a weekend about what setup changes I'm going to make. But still, my mom understands what's going on if it's go-karting or F1. Um, so, yeah, it's nice. It's it's really, I mean, it, it definitely helped me. I mean, to have the, the natural genes as well to start driving. Um, I think I also quickly realized I was better in, in racing than playing football, for example. But uh, yeah, it's it's good. It's it's nice to have a, a family like that. Yeah, no, they're very supportive. And, uh, you know, having raced against your dad as well, it's it's, it's very interesting for me to, to see posted when he was actually out there on the racetrack. So you, you've been having to sort of like all of us uh, get used to all of these uh, new ways of communications. And I know you've been, you've, you're not a man that normally talks bull, but you've been talking bull recently, haven't you, with uh, Christian and, and uh, Alex uh, on a new podcast for Red Bull as well. So was that fun? Uh, I haven't listened to it. I believe it's just gone out. But were you, were you yeah. freestyling between the three of you or what was the story there? Yeah, I think it was uh, pretty easygoing. I mean, Alex is an easygoing guy anyway. Um, yeah, we have a really good relationship, I think, with Christian as well. It was also kind of good to catch up. I mean, I talked to Christian and, and Helmut, uh, of course, but, you know, to to have a bit of a face-to-face -face conversation on um, in general with the camera on, I think it's always better. Um, so, yeah, it was fun. It was We, we laughed and um, we answered some questions at, at the end of the day as well. So, um, yeah, I hope you uh, you guys will watch it and... Um, yeah, you will you will like it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll be that'll be my uh, for later on viewing. Um, you got uh, time for that? You think? Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> you know, I've I've done a lot in the last several weeks. You know, this has been really good uh, being in one place. This is the longest I've ever been at home, uh, effectively. So, mm. you know, because you're what are you, twenty two, twenty three years old? You're such a young guy. You're still younger than when I started in Formula One. So there's so much time ahead of you to to you know, have uh, the wins that you want to have and the championships, which actually brings to mind the news today 
that uh, Sebastian won't continue his his uh, career at, at Ferrari. I assume we'll get news in time. But it, was that? Are you really following news like that in Formula One right now? Is that interesting to you? Any feelings on it? Um, I mean, I read it, of course, and uh, of course, the speculation was going on a bit. Is he going to continue with Ferrari or not? Well, today it's out he's not. Um, so I guess also very soon we'll we'll find out who uh, who the replacement is going to be. It's definitely not me, I can tell you. I'm a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a dreadful. Um, yeah, you're committed. Saw, you committed early, and as yeah, did, I, I saw uh, some Charles. questions coming along. Um, if I was going to Ferrari, but I'm not. So um, nah, but it's it's. It's what it is. Um, you know, somebody else gets an opportunity to to drive now for Ferrari, and I, I mean, of course, it's a it's a great team, and um, I'm sure they will, they they will make the right decision about the next driver. So um, yeah, let's see what's uh, what's going to happen there. Who do you think? Who do you think's most likely? Someone with think, an Italian sounding name, or someone with a Spanish um, name? I think it's it's not going to be the Italian sounding name. Okay. Interesting. So let's see. I mean, I, at the end of the day, it's just a guess. So we'll uh, we'll yeah. have to wait and see. Maybe it'll be a scenario like uh, I don't know. You're maybe too young to remember when when Toyota got all excited because they'd signed a Schumacher, and mm -hmm. the, you know they were like, "Oh my God, this is fantastic!" And then they realised they'd signed the other Schumacher. Maybe someone at Ferrari thinks they've signed Verstappen, and then your dad's <laughs> going to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. I think he would he would he would like that. He he still thinks I think he can uh, he can be close. So uh, let's let's find out. Yeah. Now he's uh, uh, he, he might have to uh, lose a little bit of weight though. But uh, let's see. <laughs> I, I will take him training with me because I, this this you know this regime I've been on has really been mm. working well. I think I'll be You're able to get into my uh, tight strong. white trousers again. Yeah. Thank you for noticing. Looking fit. Looking very fit. Yeah. You 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 definitely look just early thirties. I think. Oh, mate, I know you're definitely lying to me now. I'm 49. I was aiming for, with a little touch-up of the hair, I'm getting a cut tomorrow. I was aiming for a 48. If you'd said I look 48, I'd be happy with that. I definitely, I, I don't think you look 49. Really? Okay. Just to be honest with you. Okay. Thank just you, saying. darling. Just... Not going to lie to you. I'm getting a rose right now, so we should move oh, on. Oof, oof. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on to the next question. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I know you're, you're tight for time because you've got another training program tonight, so I'm going to respect that. But, right, focusing on to when we go to Austria, that's where, you know, Europe's opening up a little bit. Uh, Formula One will find a way of, of, of the, doing the necessary to allow you guys mm -hmm. to go racing safely. Uh, what is your, your feeling with based on where you were in Barcelona, last time you drove the car, where, if you get your crystal balls out, do you think um, Austria has been a good track for you in the past? Uh, you must be quite happy if that is the first Grand Prix at the Red Bull Ring. Yeah, but the funny thing is, when you look at the track ride, it, it basically up until last year, um, it was never looking like it was going to be our favourite track or whatever, but somehow we always had a good result. And I... I honestly just, I don't really know why. But of course, last year we, we brought an upgrade to the car while we, because we were struggling a little bit in the beginning. And um, yeah, that definitely made a big difference. Um, the year before that, it was all about tires in, in the race and we managed to um, keep the tires alive. So always some interesting things have happened there um, to be able to, to win a race like that. Um, but yeah, I, I love driving there. Of course, it's our home Grand Prix. Probably adds a bit more pressure, but I like that. You know, it, it gives you uh, even more motivation to do well. Um, and uh, yeah, then of course, with so many fans up until the, this year, you know, they were always there to support me, especially last year when I was coming through the field again to, to try and win that race. They were always every lap just going crazy when I was passing. So it's nice. It was definitely bringing a smile on my, on my face. And uh, of course, this year, uh, if we're going there, it will be a bit different. But that doesn't um, mean that uh, we will not give our very best and uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll definitely try to make the best of it and, and try to get a good result again. Yeah, excellent stuff. Well, look, um, we're, we're here. Uh, we're, we've very kindly been able to, to use the Puma site here. Would you like to send out a personal message to those who've logged in to, to see you and to hear from you? So uh, why don't you uh, send them a little message? Yeah, of course. You know, everyone, thank you for... For tuning in, um, I hope uh, that you like to see our beautiful faces, especially the one of David. Um, it's always, you know, it's it's cool to to catch up and to be able to do this also on, on the Puma uh, Instagram. You know, they they make 
great stuff for us for racing as well and casual gear. So uh, yeah, very happy with that. And uh, I hope to see you all uh, very soon. Yeah, well, well said, Max. Appreciate your time. I, uh, don't don't grunt too hard during your training session because I'll be able to hear you from my balcony. But uh, look, yeah, looking forward. To, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then uh, what, maybe let me know this uh, in the coming days when you can come over and set up uh, all the cheats. Or, not the cheats, sorry. All the assistance for yeah. uh, an aging X driver on my simulator, please. All right, we'll stay in touch about that. Okay. Take all right, care. All the best. See, see you, you guys. Bye bye. bye. Goodbye, everyone. And Max was off. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Ciao for now.